Hi, I'm Kevin Shelley from the University of Wisconsin Nutrient and Pest Management Program. And I'm here today at the site of the 2015 Wisconsin Farm Technology Days at the Stotts Brothers Farm near Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. And I'm at a demonstration of 16 different species uh, and species mixes of things that can be used as cover crops to help cover the soil, uh, add some organic matter, improve, improve soil structure, feed microbes, and if it's a legume, uh, provide some nitrogen for a following crop. Uh, cover crops, of course, being used to cover the soil during periods of time that might otherwise be fallow in between harvest and planting of the main crops in the rotation. So, for example, after uh, a cereal grain harvest, uh, midsummer cereal grain harvest, or an early season vegetable, or in Wisconsin here, even after harvest of corn as silage. And so uh, today I just want to kind of go through the different plots, the species and mixes that we have here. And uh, we're going to provide some additional information about these uh, in the video uh, through some of the graphics. So I'm going to go through them relatively quickly. But uh, we're starting off here with medium red clover, a very popular uh, species to be used as a cover crop. It's a short season perennial legume, so uh, if we get this started relatively early in the season, like uh, companion seeded with a small grain or frost seeded into winter wheat, uh, by the end of the season we can expect uh, 60 to 80 pounds of nitrogen produced, uh, as well as uh, it uh, covering the soil, preventing erosion, and suppressing some other weeds that would otherwise grow. Uh, here are, is an option for maybe planting midsummer. Uh, this is a mixture of two annual clovers. Bursim clover is the one down here a little lower, and uh, we have some crimson clover mixed in with it. And so uh, this, this clover, these clovers will go establish and grow a little bit quicker uh, during the heat of the summer if we have moisture. We need some moisture to really get those going, and if we get good growth, maybe uh, 40 to 50 or 60 pounds of nitrogen per acre produced uh, from that. Then we're going to go into some uh, different species here that in, in mixes that include some forage brassicas. This is a mixture of daikon, radish, annual ryegrass, and the bursim clover. Uh, the radish is touted as something that can produce that taproot sort of a bio-drilling or bio-tillage down into the soil. Uh, we don't have a lot of research data to show that that really does that, but it, it can to some extent, and we do know that radishes are good at sucking up or scavenging residual nitrogen that might be left over uh, from the previous crop. It's very competitive, and as you can see, we don't see a lot of clover or annual ryegrass in here. We probably need to back off uh, I think that radish is about five pounds. We could probably back it off a little bit on our seeding rate per acre. This is uh, um, dwarf Essex rape, uh, as well as barley. And again, we have the Bursim clover in there. And uh, once again, we're not seeing a lot of clover. Uh, the, the dwarf Essex rape is relatively competitive. Uh, we do have some barley coming up and uh, heading out there. And uh, the next one is, uh, again, the daikon radish along with barley and field pea. And the field pea is going to be our legume here that's going to provide some nitrogen. And you can see it's a little bit more aggressive than that uh, bursim clover is. Uh, the drawback here is the field pea tends to be uh, more expensive seed. This is a little bit more expensive uh, mix here, maybe over 50, well over $50 per acre just in seed cost, but there's some potential. And finally, uh, we have purple top turnips and oats. The turnips are a popular cover crop used among grazers to kind of fill that midsummer slump in the pasture forage production. So um, something that's going to produce uh, little bulbs that are really more on the surface of the soil. We don't quite see those yet, but uh, uh, an alternative uh, brassica here. And so what we're getting with these brassica grass 
uh, legume mixes is uh, kind of a multi-species benefit where we're getting maybe some nitrogen production, some nitrogen scavenging from the brassica, and some fibrous root development to really help the soil structure from the grass or the, the cereal grain uh, in the form of barley there. Uh, next, we're, we're going to a popular cover crop used by vegetable growers, kind of a mid-season thing that can be planted uh, maybe after an early season vegetable and before a uh, fall, early fall vegetable. This is buckwheat, and buckwheat can really uh, grow fast, producing about two to three tons of biomass, uh, dry matter per acre in about six to eight weeks. It also uh, is a heavy flower producer with lots of nectar that are good for uh, pollinators and you can see all the, the honeybees we have in this mix. This particular stand is uh, a mixture of buckwheat and cow peas, which is a, a legume uh, in, the, in the, uh, the bean family. And uh, this is a, a solid seeding of cow peas. Cow peas are one that we have not used very much in Wisconsin, but uh, it's a high nitrogen producer, 90 to 120 pounds of nitrogen is to be expected uh, after 8 to 10 weeks of growth. It's drought tolerant, it likes the heat of the summer, so I think it's one we want to take a little bit more of a look at. Uh, jumping across the alleyway here, I have a mixture of sorghum sedan grass and cow peas. So uh, some more of those cow peas. Uh, this is a midsummer adapted species. Both of these species like the warm weather. Uh, need a little bit moisture to get going, but once they can go, uh, will tolerate the heat and a little bit of drought. And uh, the sorghum sedan grass in particular is one that's going to be able to produce a lot of biomass that can be added back into the soil to uh, help condition the soil through added organic matter. Uh, the the Sorghum sedan grass, if we let it get too big, can be kind of fibrous, and the idea here with the cow peas is that we're adding a little bit of nitrogen that might help that, that uh, carbonaceous biomass to break down a little bit better. Uh, here's another legume. This is a vetch. This is a uh, chickling vetch, which is a very cool season vetch. It can be planted very early in the season or rather late. I'm thinking in southern Wisconsin, maybe as late as uh, late September. It's very frost and cold tolerant and uh, is uh, something we need to collect more data on, uh, need to learn more about, but looks like it has some potential for nitrogen production uh, as a legume at, uh, on the, the, the front end of the, and the tail end of the growing season that some of the clovers and uh, other legumes won't do. This is another plot of buckwheat. This is just solid seeded buckwheat. And one of the concerns, uh, we do get those blossoms relatively quickly and it's a heavy seed producer. So I was worried about this uh, going to seed and becoming a weed seed issue. I, I clipped this down uh, two weeks ago today. We're here in the beginning of August and uh, it is starting to grow back and uh, delayed kind of some of that seed production, but it, it's blossoming relatively quickly as it grows back. Okay, now we're going to get into some more grass species, some forage grasses and cereal grains. This is annual ryegrass, and it's a very uh, quick establisher, uh, covers the ground really fast. It's fairly shallow rooted, uh, so it can condition the, the top uh, 10 inches of the soil or so, uh, but um, doesn't have the, the real deep fibrous root system that some of the other cereal grains or forage grasses will have, but very quick grower. Uh, this is not your beginner's cover crop. There are some uh, issues associated with it going to seed in the seeding year, and uh, it can be hard to control that with glyphosate or other herbicides, so it's something we need to, to use with caution. This is cereal rye. It's a winter grain. Uh, it's probably the most cover, uh, popular cover crop used across the upper Midwest. It can be planted in the in the early fall and will grow uh, into the late fall, keep growing, uh, developing uh, a pretty good deep fibrous root system, very good at scavenging nitrogen and keeping that in the system. 
you will over winter. Uh, we're evaluating it in Wisconsin as a, uh, you can either terminate it early in the spring as a cover crop or uh, let it grow and use it as an early season forage and with still enough time to plant the full season crop afterwards and um, a relatively uh, inexpensive option uh, to, uh, to, to do all those uh, things that we need a cover crop to do. Uh, this is Japanese millet, uh, something I haven't worked with before, uh, popular in some other areas of the world, but uh, it's touted as being a quick uh, biomass producer and it, it has been a uh, deep fibrous root system take up a lot of nitrogen and other nutrients keep that in the system and it can be used uh, as hay uh, I did cut this two weeks ago I think we could easily get one or two crops of hay out of it during the summer uh, with pretty good regrowth it, the, the first crop did uh, was susceptible to some rust however uh, moving on this is a spring triticale uh, spring triticale is a mixture, uh, a, a hybrid, or a, a, bre a bread blend of spring wheat and winter cereal rye. Uh, just one we're kind of taking a look at. It uh, uh, doesn't have quite the nitrogen immobilization uh, effect that cereal rye does in the spring. So uh, it also will winter kill as a spring green in most year. A spring grain in most years will winter kill, uh, which can you know serve as a management advantage there uh, if that's desired. And this last one is a something that there's a, a lot of interest in. Uh, we're just learning about it. Uh, it's sun hemp, and it is a tropical legume uh, touted to produce quite a bit of nitrogen. Uh, a lot of uh, a biomass, as you can see, it's, it's grown a lot here in the five weeks since it's been planted and uh, is uh, taprooted, so should do a lot to uh, help condition the soil. Uh, and uh, we, we look forward to doing more uh, testing and evaluation of, of sun hemp. The, the seed cost was very high for a few years. It's, it really came down this year. It's still a relatively expensive option, but uh, We'll see what the future brings. So with that, uh, thank you for joining me on this quick tour of the cover crop plots that we have here at the 2015 Wisconsin Farm Technology Days show.